Assalamu alaikum and good morning. It's been three weeks since we started our session on aesthetic dentistry, so it's going to be a quick walk through what we have discussed in our previous session about the fundamental aspects of aesthetic dentistry. Uh, we discussed about aesthetics and its components and the philosophy of colors. Uh, today, we are going to discuss about adhesion and on our next session I want you to get prepared yourself from dental material books so we get better understanding about uh, the composites so moving forward uh, during our discussion uh, of fundamental aspects of aesthetics uh, we gone through the transition of portraits uh, looking at uh, the past and present era celebrities and we have noticed a change in the portraits uh, put as a smile and we observed uh, that smile has a great impact on overall personality and we also observe that a smile is the greatest asset a person can have uh, Talking about the aesthetic elements, we noticed that for a perfect, aesthetically pleasing smile, we need to have these aesthetic elements in perfect harmony, such as color, texture, shape and size, proportion, symmetry and alignment. Everything needs to be in perfect harmony in order to have a perfect aesthetically pleasing smile we also went through some of the basic smile patterns in order to understand uh, how much tooth structure or I would say white and pink aesthetics are being visible which needs to be corrected to gain a perfect smile uh, we also discussed various stages of smile and the clinical situation in which we have to incorporate these aesthetic elements uh, not only during treatment but also during planning uh, we have to apply these aesthetic elements uh, in order to gain a perfect smile we also discussed about light and the philosophy of color and the Munsell's color system based on uh, the hue, chroma and value. We also discuss various methods of shade determination about uh, uh, the Vita classical shade method. We also discussed more advanced Vita 3D shade determination method and also discussed about the spectrophotometer and we also discussed about the guidelines for shared selection so today we are going to discuss about fundamental concepts of enamel and dentine adhesion so adhesion is simply defined as joining together of two independent materials for which contact is maintained without the aid of external force or in more funny way when two or more adherents adhere together by an adhesive is called adhesion here we are being introduced by rather four basic terminologies which are important to understand before we move forward uh, we have adherents it means uh, the material, the surface, uh, to which we are going to join the other surface. Uh, the, these are the two different adherents. In between them, we have an intermediate layer, which is joining the two adherents together. And the whole process of joining is called adhesion. Applying to give you the analogy of scotch tape, uh, consider that you have one surface 
or it's a substrate or it uh, is an adherent on the other hand you have a scotch tape which is composed of an adhesive and a polymer material when you stick to a relatively a different surface it just joins to the different surface and the adhesive here is playing a role to keeping the two different materials together joined together uh, giving you this analogy that we have an interface and we have an adhesive can a dental adhesion be possible for example uh, we have interface one at one end or the adherin uh, which could be enamel and dentin and we have another interface on the other end which could be a composite restoration a crown and bridge inlays and onlays or it could be a simple orthodontic bracket so with this in mind an adhesive in between is a material which is joining these two independent surfaces together not only it is joining it is also transferring the load from one surface to the other okay so what can be the clinical applications if we incorporate uh, the dental uh, dental adhesion uh, we are relying less on the needs of mechanical retention uh, because we are achieving everything with a thin layer of adhesive uh, so we are conserving a lot of tooth structure for example if you have a one millimeter lesion and you want to do amalgam no matter what you have to perform a two millimeter deep uh, uh, preparation in order to give a perfect retention form so you are cons uh, conserving more tooth structure when you are utilizing dental adhesion and between the restorative material and the tooth structure the adhesive itself is reducing the micro leakage the sensitivity and as well as the marginal staining and we can perform a static restorative treatment if we utilize dental adhesion and not only this we are also transmitting and distributing all of the functional stresses in a restoration unlike amalgam which is just dissipate, dissipating in its surrounding uh, so it is we have a potential to reinforce a weakened tooth structure so uh, discussing the type uh, what are various types of uh, bonding mechanisms we have a mechanism which is called a mechanical bonding in which there is uh, the interlocking just because of the surface irregularities okay uh, we have a chemical bonding mechanism in which uh, the bonding is being taken place at the very atomic level between the electrons of one molecule to the electrons of the another molecule so it is uh, by definition is the strongest one and then we have a weak van der Waal forces or uh, some electrostatic adhesion through the exchange of the ions which is called a physical bond to give you uh, excellent analogy of the application uh, of what we have learned in our previous slides uh, I want you to pay attention that we have one material here which is termed as a normal dentin and this is one adherent or one interface this is another adherent another interface of restorative material in between them you can recognize we have a layer of adhesive with magnified view you can see interlocking patterns and uh, the channel and network is uh, taking place between uh, by the advent of uh, maybe the physical chemical or mechanical bonding so uh, this is termed as hybrid layer okay so uh, understanding uh, this illustration here you can appreciate that this is a dentin surface 
you can see uh, uh, the dentinal tubule and the intertubular dentin and the peritubular dentin. And now consider this. When you penetrate uh, the resin monomer or the res dental resin inside, it is in the liquid phase. Uh, which can penetrate inside these tubules and when you cure it cure them they become hard they become solidified there is a phase change they become solid from liquid phase to the solid phase after curing and when they become cured when they become solid so what they are doing they are creating uh, extension inside these tubules in this illustration all of the dentine has been removed only uh, leaving the uh, the resin tags so you can understand the pattern so it means that the resin basically penetrated inside these tubules and creating a mechanical means of retention in the dentinal tubule and this hybrid layer uh, there could be some weak van der Waals forces or actual chemical bonding is being taking place between uh, the adhesive system and maybe the collagen or uh, the calcium and the phosphate ions of the tooth itself. So discussing quickly a timeline, so Bonacore reported uh, acid etching to the enamel starting with some non-bonded composites and then acid etching revealed that removal of smear layer is important in order to achieve excellent bonding strength. Uh, then dentine bonded composites were developed separately and various modifications were done during the course of the advancement. So whenever we are discussing about any bonding system uh, the system is basically composed of three steps or three different philosophies. Number one is the etching and number two is the priming and number three is the bonding resin itself. So the etching procedure is conditioning or cleaning the surface and at the same time it is demineralizing enamel and exposing enamel rods in dentin it is not only exposing the dentinal tubules but also it is penetrating inside while removing the smear plug so Bonacor basically introduced that this smear layer is weakly attached to the dentin. When it is completely removed, we can have excellent bonding strength between 20 to 50 megapascals. And the concentration used was 37% phosphoric acid. And the usual application time for enamel is 30 seconds. So what we are doing here, uh, by using acid agent, we are transforming a smooth enamel surface into more irregular surface. And when we are removing some of the surface molecules, we are exposing more energetic molecules while increasing the surface energy. And it has a great impact when a fluid resin is applied it radially penetrates into the surface by a Kepler reaction and during polymerization it just interlocks inside and these resin micro tags within enamel surface is the fundamental mechanism for enamel adhesion okay so uh, this is the acid enamel uh, you can see some of the patterns inside and now just visualize in your mind when you apply a resin inside and it just penetrates inside upon curing it solidifies what it is leaving if I just decalcify 
all of this in, uh, material and just leaving this resin network, you can see that how critically they are interconnected to each other, giving us excellent retentive force. Uh, we were talking about a lot smear layer. So what is a smear layer? Uh, it is basically uh, a debris which is prepared during the procedure of tooth preparation. Whether you are using uh, a burr, a carbide burr, or you are using a diamond burr. So the, the same debris which is being generated is deposited on the surface. And it is basically composed of hydroxyapatites and some of the altered and denatured collagen. Uh, these are denatured because of the frictional heat produced by the burr itself on the surface. So what it is doing, it is uh, filling the orifices and forming the smear plug, okay? The same smear layer, when penetrates inside the dentinal tubule, is forming a smear plug. What it is doing? It is decreasing the permeability of the dentin up to 90%, but it is allowing the diffusion of water, okay? So, removal of smear layer has some effects. And what are those effects? It will increase the fluid flow into the exposed dentin, which can then interfere with adhesion. And I'm going to explain in the future slides. So what I was discussing here, you can appreciate in this slide the amount of smear layer produced and the smear plug, which is occluding the dentinal tubule. And now you can anticipate that this occlusion is preventing some of the ingress and, and also preventing the permeability of the dentinal fluid here. Another, uh, the smear layer covering the whole surface of the dentin. Here, some partial closure of the tubules, a complete occlusion of the tubules. Again, a smear layer and some of the smear plug is being here. Again, this uh, previous, when you remove completely the smear layer, what you are left here is a complete smear layer free dentin surface. The next component of the bonding system is priming. And what do you mean by priming? Priming means that you are converting that hydrophilic surface into hydrophobic. Okay, your enamel and dentin are hydrophilic in nature. Okay, your enamel and dentin are hydrophilic in nature and your composites and other materials they are hydrophobic so they are never going to bond with that okay this is for sure so for that reason we have to use certain molecules or a primer is a monomer or a polymer which is being carried out mixed in a solvent uh, a solvent could be acetone, it could be ethanol and water, or it could be primarily water. Uh, it's, it's used as a vehicle. So when applied on the tooth surface, the hydrophilic component of the primer joins with the tooth structure and the hydrophobic end of the primer is going to join with the hydrophobic component of the bonding system. Uh, giving you the analogy here, we have the tooth structure uh, here which is hydrophilic. So this primer has the ability to penetrate inside these tubules because it has some hydrophilic ends. And the hydrophobic ends, they are being pulled together by the means of primer. So you can apply the bonding resin which is penetrated inside the primer which bonds with the primer and the composite restoration then can be bonded on the treated surface. Okay? So, this was a quite simple way for the enamel but 
when we are talking about dentin, the adhesive materials can interact with dentin in different ways. They can uh, mechanically interact, they can chemically interact, or they can interact in both of the ways. Okay? So, uh, dentine adhesion relies on the penetration of adhesive monomer into the network of collagen fibers which was left exposed by the acid etching. You have seen in the previous slides when the whole dentine surface was covered by the smear layer. So, what is acid etching doing? The acid etch is completely removing uh, all of uh, this uh, mineral material on from the surface and also exposing some of the collagen on the other hand we have gloss ionomer and phosphate based adhesive bonds uh, they are chemically bonding with the hydroxyapatite of the tooth structure so in our previous slides I was talking about to discuss in detail about the criticality of bonding in dentine. Why? Number one, dentine is a living tissue unlike enamel. Okay. And it has tubules, it has more organic content. And about these tubules, uh these tubules increase in number and diameter as you are going deeper at the level of the pulp. So, as you are going deeper and deeper, the fluid flow is getting more extensive. So, giving you the analogy that if you have some sponge in your hand and you are filling it up with water, while you are squeezing it by one hand and you can feel the fluid coming outward and you are using your magic glue to adhere something on this wet surface it's hardly impossible to achieve but there are strategies to achieve that and the dentin that undergoes these compositional changes um, um, such as sclerotic dentin it is much more resistant to acid etching such as the normal dentine okay and the dentine beneath a curious and non curious cervical lesion has an altered content of the minerals so what is dentine it's a living tissue it's more organic content it has dentinal tubules and the tubules increase as we are going deeper it's an hydrated tissue and the movement of the fluid is outward and this is defense mechanism of the tooth itself because the intrapulpal pressure is always higher and it is pushing that fluid outward so there is less chance of bacterial ingression inside the tubule so this is basically a defense mechanism and uh, we have to overcome that when we ever whenever we are trying to achieve optimum bonding so again when you acid etch and you completely uh, remove the smear layer what you are exposed with you are also exposed with some of the collagen okay some of the collagen fibers and these collagen fibers are triple helix in structure a, a DNA is double helix so your collagen network, your collagen fiber is rather triple helix and each fiber is weakly bonded with the other fiber with small van der Waal forces and they are always upright in nature like some spiky hairstyle, okay? So when they are in upright position, they have better interaction with the bonding resin okay and if you over dry the dentine 
you are basically desiccating it and removing the excess water. And when the water is evaporated from the dentin, the upright collagen fibers are just collapsed and leaving a very less surface area for the bonding resin to get penetrated. Okay, so that's why you get less bonding strength and it is never recommended that you desiccate your dentin. Always, always, always keep your dentin slightly moist so your bonding resin can better penetrate and give you excellent bonding strength. So, uh, what we have understood, the bonding or the adhesion is better with superficial dentin. Why? Because we have less tubules, we have less water content, and at the same time, we have more intertubular dentin, which we know that has more mineral content. So in this illustration, we have composite, a bonding and a priming here, and during conditioning, this much amount of uh, area was affected during acid etching. So exposing some of uh, the collagen fibers and the bonding is penetrating inside these irregularities. Okay, so giving you excellent bonding strength. And at the same time, this hybrid layer, remember when I showed you in the beginning, is basically what these collagen fibers and the bonding resin, there is a chemical interaction between the collagen fibers and the bonding resin. <clears throat> so adhesion is better with superficial dentine. Uh, no, no doubt that uh, there are stresses are being generated at the dentine interface because uh, when uh, the bond uh, or the composite uh, or the adhesive system is being cured, uh, initially they are in liquid phase where the molecules are allowing them to freely move but upon curing these molecules come together and inherently inherently it is causing shrinkage so you can never never eliminate shrinkage but you can overcome and due to this shrinkage the stresses are being generated at the dentine interface and we call these stresses due to polymerization as configuration factor and which is a ratio from bonded to unbonded surface and which is telling you that how much shrinkage is predicted when you are applying composite to a number of surfaces. The less number of surfaces, the low configuration ratio and better bonding. Okay. So how to overcome? We have to place our composites in increments and recommended is you have to place in oblique increments. And you have to utilize a bonding reason which is greater than 70, which can provide you greater than 17 megapascals and greatly you have to utilize, you must have some enamel margins so you can achieve enamel bonding. <coughs> So let's go to the classification of the adhesive system. Uh, the adhesive system is the dentine bonding agent, the bonding agent, a dental bond, or dentine adhesive system, a bond, but there is no jams in it, okay? So in our first generation of bond was based on the method where the calcium ions were chelated on the tooth surface while creating a water resistant layer unfortunately the bond strength was no more than two to three megapascals so it was uh, of course obsolete the second generation uh, was the phosphate ester in the ethanol okay the ethanol uh, was used as the vehicle so the phosphate esters were uh, chemically bonding uh, with the uh, negatively charged phosphate group in the resin and positively charged calcium ions in the smear layer. But unfortunately, since the bonding was occurring 
between the smear layer, which is quite weakly attached to the tooth surface. And we know that, that this smear layer was being produced during the preparation of the tooth surface. And the bonding strength is, of course, because it is totally relying on the smear layer, is no more than 1 to 5 megapascals. The third generation, it uh, contained hydroxyethyl metacrylate, which is a hydrophilic monomer, and uh, it was not good as well. Uh, then comes another system which was initially classified on the basis of steps. Uh, for example, uh, you have a hydrophilic tooth structure. We have a fourth generation bonding agent we are talking about, the gold standard in total edge system. This is the gold standard of total ad system. So we have hydrophobic restorative material on the one end, we want to bond it, we want to adhere it on to the other adherent or the tooth structure. So what are the steps involved? It was a three-step system in which a separate etchant was used to condition the surface. After etching, a priming is needed and of course, this priming, what it is doing, it is converting the hydrophilic surface into hydrophobic. And then a bonding agent is applied directly on the prime, prime surface and then it is cured and which uh, gives you the surface for uh, adhering the composite system or other, uh, uh, other materials. In the fifth generation, uh, which is also called a two-step system, a separate agent is used, uh, but the bond has some hydrophilic properties. It had some uh, properties that it can be, it can prime and bond uh, the dentin. So it was called a two-step system. Uh, in sixth generation, uh, another philosophy was evolved, uh, which was basically based on. Uh, on the removal of the smear, com uh, removal of the smear plug completely or partially. Uh, here, this system is partially removing uh, the smear plug. And what are the benefits? Uh, we are going to discuss when we will discuss this uh, bonding generation type. So this is basically a two-step system. We have a self-etching primer which is a primer is acidic in nature which is causing the dissolution and exposing the collagen the primer itself is doing that because it is acidic in nature and the bonding agent is penetrating into the prime surface so you don't need a separate etchant in the two-step system of the sixth generation uh, it was pioneered by Carrare uh, and uh, uh, the, the monomer they have introduced was the MDP, which is uh, providing quite extensive bonding strength. Uh, so this two-step bonding system is having a self-etching primer and a bonding agent. And then we were introduced with the seventh generation bonding agent, or a hydrophobic, uh, sorry, a seventh generation bonding agent. This was a single step system in which the etch step, the prime step, and the bonding step all were joined in just one component. So the one system or a single step system was capable of etching and priming and bonding all together. And it removed a number of steps and uh, it can be used as selective etching method and uh, you can use it uh, as self etching method. So let's understand the classification on the basis of smear layer and smear plug removal. Uh, on the left side you have a total etch system in which you have to use a separate etchant. Whenever you are using a separate etchant you are completely removing the smear plug no doubt it is giving you a reliable bonding. Uh, on the other hand, you have a self-etch system in which 
the primer itself is acidic in nature so you don't need any separate etchant so the steps are minimized in the seventh generation in which only one bottle was capable of etching priming and bonding and uh, what we are looking at here is that the amount of smear plug being removed is not complete and it is giving us no post operative sensitivity whenever we are using this type of system okay so let's uh, look at the mechanism of the total edge system uh, what is going on in the total edge system we are using the acid edge inside the dentinal tubules the whole smear plug is completely removed leaving this empty tubule the primer is then applied on the surface the primer also penetrated inside the tubules and whenever the bond is applied the bond gets penetrated following the primer and upon curing you get a reliable bonding the fifth generation the total edge system we have the smear layer we have the smear plug uh, when we acid etch we are again completely removing the smear layer and we are also completely removing the smear plug uh, the bonding resin is priming itself so in so, uh, in the fifth generation which is quite common uh, clinical technique uh, the primer itself is a bond on the self edge system uh, we can see that uh, we have a smear layer and a smear plug but because the primer itself is acidic in nature but it is mildly acidic so it is not completely removing the smear plug but it is partially leaving it's partially sparing inside the tubules and preventing post-op sensitivity and the bonding reason uh, is applied in the sixth generation as a second step and what we are doing in the seventh generation is a self edge system uh, we have a smear plot and we have a smear layer a one component which has the ability to etch prime and bond in just one system and this is going to be the most reliable method in the future and the eighth generation bonding system which is being introduced recently by GC uh, named as J Premium Bond is also quite uh, effective and it contains uh, you know, all three monomers in just one bottle so now what is the composition uh, of these systems the agent uh, agent rinse approach versus self and self edge approach uh, the what, what is a primer based on the primers usually based on uh, the solvents the solvent could be a water or ethanol based or acetone based the adhesive system which is uh, could, could be a dual cure or light cure a degree of conversion versus degree of polymerization and the phase separation so what is the role of water in self edge adhesive Water is added to a uh, formulation to ionize the acidic monomer so they can better penetrate inside the collagen network. And increasing the water concentration resulted in improved acidic monomer ionization and increased depth of dentine demineralization created by the, acid, the acidic monomer because uh, they can penetrate better. Regarding the biocompatibility, uh, the interaction of the agents with the dentine is limited to the superficial area only, 1 to 7 microns, no more than that. It is unlikely that the acid can be directly responsible for any purple injury. Uh, the effects of agent on dentine are limited uh, by the buffering effects of hydroxyapatites, which are being leached out and continuously uh, buffering the immediate surface which is in contact with the agent so it is prudent that whenever you apply the agent you always rigorously scrub so you may better get a uniform etching surface what is micro leakage is defined 
as the passage of bacteria and their toxins between the restorative margins and the tooth preparation wall, uh, which can lead to secondary caries and uh, the pulper response to restorative material is related to the degree of marginal leakage. Uh, bonding to the resin to enamel is still the best way to prevent the micro leakage because we know that uh, in enamel it, ha it has more mineral content and the locking pattern is excellent in enamel as compared to in dentin. Uh, what is nano leakage? Uh, there are certain small porosities in the hybrid layer at the transition between the hybrid and the and the mineralization dentine, which sometimes allows the penetration of quite small nanoparticles of silver nitrate dye. So if they can pass through, so we can term it as the nano leakage. As you can see in this unaffected dentine, the hybrid layer and the penetration of the dye through that in this area you can appreciate this is the nano leakage uh, clinical factors in dental adhesion the mineral content of the dentine is uh, dentine increases in different situations for example uh, aged dentine uh, dentine beneath the carious lesion may be sclerotic and in, in, in conditions of non carious cervical lesions. Okay, so you may require uh, uh, more acid etch time in these situations because the dentine in these areas are sclerosed. Um, what are the expanded clinical indications for uh, these dentine adhesives? Uh, we can use as desensitization. Why? And how? Because these uh, bonds, uh, they can be used to treat the hypersensitivity of the root surface. You just apply on the surface and uh, it occludes uh, the tubules and upon curing, it just forms a barrier. So nothing goes in and out. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, we will discuss some of the composite overview in context of the fundamentals of the aesthetic dentistry and what types of composites are indicated in certain types of situations. So this is going to be our next session. Any questions, please drop your questions in uh, the class group on WhatsApp. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.